Okay, in my last video I talked about how to create a multi-tab, multi-pane experience in WSL using GNOME Terminal and Tmux. Now, as soon as I did that video, I was back on the forums and I saw somebody mention something I never heard of, hyper.js, a command terminal written in JavaScript and HTML and CSS. Basically, it uses the Electron platform, which is the same platform that... Um, uh, the Atom text editor from GitHub and Visual Studio Code from Microsoft is written on, uh, as well as Slack. So Electron is gaining some uh, uh, popularity as a platform. Uh, I wanted to check it out. I just downloaded this. I So I'm learning as I go. I did play around with this at work a little bit. Um, but on this PC, I've just downloaded it. And uh, this is version... I, it's not the absolute latest version, but it's the latest version that's available for download, 1.4.8. Uh, okay, now I know for sure that I think that there is one bug in here that I discovered right away when I went to edit preferences. And yeah, there we go. I got the same error at work. So basically what uh, the reason why this happens is because there's not a default text editor set up to open a JavaScript file. Um, so I think what I can do is, uh, first of all, I can just drop right into Bash here. It opens up in PowerShell by default or Command.exe, one of the two. Let me just drop right into Bash. Okay. And now, um, let's see, I can change to my uh, Windows directory. Uh, yeah, my users directory on Windows. Think that's it, and do lslga instead of using edit preferences. I ought to just be able to edit the let's see dot hyper dot js. Yeah, so I don't need to use preferences. I can just go vi dot hyper dot js. There we go. Uh, okay, that should work. And uh, so I know I do want to change a few things in here. Um, eventually, if I spent more time on this, I would go in and mess with the colors a bit. But uh, I definitely, I prefer the uh, I-beam cursor, so I'll change this to uh, insert mode, uh, beam. That will give me the I-beam. I do like a blinking cursor, so let's change this to true. And... Uh, Let's see. And I don't want it to go into Command EXE or PowerShell by default. I want it to go straight into Bash because uh, that's what I'm uh, basically you know, trying to set up uh, to have a default kind of out of the box experience. So here I can type in, let's see, I don't be able to do uh, insert C, not going in, insert mode C colon backslash backslash. Windows backslash backslash system 32 backslash backslash bash dot exe. I think that's right. I think that's the location where bash is located at. Um, and let's see. Oh, God. I do not want that bell. I hate that bell. Uh, I hate terminals that ring the bell. And, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm at the beginning of the line and I hit backspace and it rings the bell, it drives me crazy. Uh, so definitely want to turn that off. I'll get rid of that. Uh, so set that to false and uh, copy on select. Yeah, I think I had the cut copy paste support's not probably as awesome as I'd like, but it's better than GNOME Terminal and Tmux, where you have to just you know I have to spend a lot more time on that um, to get the cut copy paste behavior that I want. Um, in GNOME Terminal and Tmux in my, from my last video. Um, and that's really about it. So hopefully this is going to let me save this. And then, uh, yeah, you can't see it, but off screen I got a notification that says the hyper configuration was reloaded. And uh, so that means I guess it wants me to restart it. I don't know if I really have to restart it or not. What happens if I drop directly into bash? And, uh, well, yeah, I, I need to restart it to see if it's going to go into Bash Cell by default here. So, uh, 
uh oh I just should have created a shortcut for it on my uh, let's see hyper there it is I should have pinned it to my taskbar so I could get back to it faster it does remember the size and location of the command shell which is something that none of Microsoft's councils can manage to do without going into preferences and you actually having to manually set it yourself it's like how hard can that be uh, okay anyways soapbox get off my soapbox um, okay so that went straight into uh, bash which is what I want um, there's a, I'm going to do another video that says how to change these background colors and these directory names because that drives me insane because there is kind of a bug. See how that happens? And it's not just in HyperJFs either. <clears throat> just about, you know, 9 out of 10 solutions I've tried for running, you know, bash inside something or other does that. <clears throat> That's kind of, some kind of repainting bug. Microsoft should look at that. Um, but anyways, I'll do a separate video on that someday. Uh, so that's not bad. Now, here's what's nice about this. Control Shift D, that's going to give me my, again, I'm going for this three pane arrangement like I talked about in my last video. Control Shift D is going to uh, split uh, the vertical and Control Shift E is going to split horizontal. I get mouse support automatically without having to run Tmux mouse on or set mouse. Um, so that's pretty nice. Um, and so, the, I mean, it looks good. There's a fatal problem with this, though. Unfortunately, it's really, it's just too slow. And people have mentioned this. Uh, I've been on the HyperJS forum. People say it's slow, especially in Bash. This is the problem. Um, that's a VIBRC is a shortcut I have that takes me right, it does a VI on the tilde slash dot Bash RC. Uh, anyways. Um, and really see how if I hold down the key, key, it really, I cannot follow the mouse. We can see that the, the line number will change, but see how it isn't re-rendering the mouse position with each line move. And so that would make it really hard to use VI uh, in a fast sort of, you know, moving around fast with the, um, with the, uh, with the mouse. And I, these guys on HyperJS, I don't know, they don't seem to get the problem because people have complained about this, it's slow, and then, then people would say, well, it's not slow for me, it works on my desk, and then say, well, VI, you know, it's definitely slow in VI, and then, they'll, you know, and then they'll say, the guy will say, oh, um, just go into, this is like on a Mac, somebody's complaining about this on a Mac, but it, it doesn't matter, I, I think, um, you know, because HyperJS was a cross-platform thing. It's not. It's not just for WSL. I happen to be using it for WSL, but it's. Um, it's a general general thing, not or not exclusive to WSL. So, anyways, this comment was a guy from on the Mac, and then the guy would say, "Oh, you know, you just got to go and increase your key repeat rate." I'm like, no, dude, you're totally not understanding the problem here. It's not the key repeat rate of your keyboard. It's the ability of uh, HyperJS to keep up with the rendering speed of the mouse moving. So, I don't know, sometimes these people on these forums, they, they just drive me insane. Um, anyway, so we see this really, unfortunately, would be unacceptable for me. Um, you know, if I was doing pair programming with somebody and they came over to my desk and, you know, we were doing pair programming together and they were using VI and, you know, they started, they'd be like, dude, what have you installed? <laughs> what kind of demon software have you installed on your uh, desk? Uh, now, but that is really unfortunate. Um, and if there was some way to increase the performance of this, it would really be quite awesome. Um, Cut, copy, paste support is there. It's a little bit weirder than I thought it would be, but it's no weirder than any other, you know. Command terminals are not notoriously, you know, they usually have different keyboard strokes for uh, cut, copy, paste because the control C is normally something that's going to kill your current process uh, versus any, every other application. Control C is going to be something that copies to the clipboard. So that means you have to do something different uh, for copying things to the clipboard and, you know, various strategies have been developed in, uh, but anyway, so the, it's, it's as good as anything else, I guess. Uh, it's a little bit different, but it's as good as anything else. Um, 
So what do I think about this? You know, other than the performance, I love it. <laughs> you know, it's got everything I need uh, to do. Now, the other thing I want to say about this um, is if a, f if a few open source aficionados can write a multi-tab, multi-paned command terminal in JavaScript, for crying out loud, just kind of wonder why hasn't Microsoft been able to do this? I'll get back on my soapbox here. I mean, when did Windows first come out? 1985. This is 2017. That's 32 years ago uh, that Microsoft has had an opportunity to do this, um, and they haven't. <laughs> right? They have not come out with an out of the box, multi tab, multi paned terminal. They, they just now finally got around to supporting Linux. Um, I mean, look, Windows has been my go-to operating system forever, okay? I've tried, and I've tried everything. I've tried Linux. I've tried Mac. I prefer Windows, okay? But I do miss the command line options on Windows. And so I'm encouraged that there's some progress that's happening in this area as of late. Um, I wish it would have happened a long, long, long time ago. I have to wonder, too... How much of, of Apple really eating Microsoft's lunch on, you know, developers have flocked to the Mac platform by the millions, largely because of this issue, because of they want a Unix-like command line terminal and good options like this, you know, multi-tab, multi-pane, a good experience. Not using X Windows, not using Tmux. I mean, you know, yeah, you can make that work, but it's not a great experience. I have to spend a lot of time, you know, learning about Tmux.com files to get, you know, to get all my keystrokes set up the way I want. That's not what I want. I want it out of the box. Um, and, you know, Microsoft has just ignored this area of computing, I feel, for far, far too long. And, you know, Apple has eaten their lunch over this. This has cost Microsoft, in my view, hundreds of billions of dollars <laughs> in revenue and market cap and everything else. Um, and, you know, they still cannot get a multi-tab, multi-paned, uh, out-of-the-box, positive, great user experience uh, command line terminal. And, and look at this. People have been able to write it in JavaScript for crying out loud. What is the problem? What exactly is the problem that's preventing Microsoft from doing this? Um, I don't know. I got to believe they're working on it. They, you know, I read a comment today. Can't, can neither confirm nor deny that we're working on it. What does that mean? That always means they're working on it, okay? Uh, but, you know, that's, uh, I, I can say that. They can't. Uh, anyways. Still, I'm encouraged to see the progress in this direction, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens over the coming months and years. Okay, thanks, everybody. Let me know what you guys think about this and whether you think HyperJS would be usable for you with WSL.